are with game one. I told you it wouldn't be too long. Hope you weren't getting too impatient while we were waiting for this action, but our Call of Duty team, they know to make it worth our time as we're seeing Hootsie getting the first kill he's gonna have for this hard point match here. Saints already 13 on the board, holding it tight and down. Neb sliding through, taking down Brandon, opening up the point, trying to get some high ground and camp out that spot, make sure no one can get in. It's gonna be 30 seconds left on the hard point for this side of the map. Saints still holding on 17 but no one's able to gain contest of it right now they're trading back and forth but conestoga able to take it up but Seawads wanted to take him down right behind him is one more from conestoga on that catwalk but not going to notice each other he's going to be alive for now j ray sliding through looking for an opportunity to find someone to pick them off but perfect timing or not so perfect you're the saint over there he's taking some shots but not going to take him down he is kind he of hard to spawned he is kind of ping though for sure and it does go up to the next point. It does look like Saints do have that lockdown as well. That's good. Seawaz getting off and sorry, I believe his name is Kautzen. 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 I believe that's a new player, is that not? Kauti season, I'm gonna call him, but new or not, veteran, pro, rookie, fresher green, he's putting up the numbers. Four that to one right sure. now on a three killing spree, but no time on the board, doesn't matter. Dreamo's gonna get taken down by Kusi season once again. And while the Saints are taking full control of this hard point, 30 seconds left on the clock, they have full map control of it as well. They are doing their rotations trying to corral them into the corners of the map with the spawns. We're getting a flank coming up from the rear side. But the Saints should be ready for it as they have the hard point with the building. Neb is going to take down Cootie Season. Brandon's taking down two uh, with the help of Seawaz. Brandon's finally going to go down, down, but Neb, Neb is, is cornered, that's for sure. And it does look like Brandon, or sorry, Seawaz is going to get him. He does. They do have that point locked down for sure, but there is Savvy and I believe j Ray coming up to that. I think they're on the roof? No, they are there at the bottom. One's on the roof, that's for sure. It does look like they do have that point though. It does look good. Kautzen does get that kill, making his way towards the point to kind of get, get that capture. Savvy getting on point and capturing that, watching that tunnel. J-Ray on the roof, that's for sure, but he does get knocked with Kautzen's grenade. That is perfect placement there for a grenade. Ooh, but look at the way the Saints are pushing up here. They got, to, ooh, actually just completely shut down and nullified oh. by Conestoga. They shut down the push, but Enslea coming through. The double. Getting revenge for the team. Triple. One more here. Three killing spree, and he's going to take control of the hard point. That push didn't go their way entirely, but they were able to salvage the remains, taking it up. Hard point is now theirs. They're contesting for it. Brandon coming through from behind, taking that one. All you need is one oh. more. Not going to fight. They're going to take him down. Ten seconds left, and it's all going to go to Conestoga. Look Looking at it now, they're probably going to be at a nice, comfortable 36 to 80, but they're going to leave it behind a little early. They want to try to fight for this next hard point. Saints having full control of it already. That's, sure. That's definitely the advantage, especially if one team kind of has that lockdown and mm. the other team has that advantage to get a quick lockdown. We do have, it looks like Seawaz is on that side, that top bow, sorry, top barrier. Ooh. Does get killed by Neb. That's unfortunate right there. But we do have J-Ray coming up on that top side with, looks like, and say a covering. Does he get the kill though? Ooh, Neb just barely no. escaping the clutches of death there. Cootie's even gonna deliver it to his teammate instead. Now that alleyway seems to be spelling doom for whoever gets spotted first. Cootie season trying to be the first on the point instead, and there he is finding it firmly planted. A little skittish on the camera here as That's he's dancing sure. around, but you gotta do it to stay safe. 15 on the clock left. The Saints are looking comfortable with a 120 advantage. 33, Kanasoga's gonna be holding, but they look to be moving over to the next potential target. They are. And they're very close to it. They're gonna have full control. Control of the same kind of fight. That's for sure. That especially with this pass point that they just played, it is very tricky to kind of get that good defense and try to, you know, try to take it over. That's for sure. But it does look like Con sorry, Con to go. Like College does have that point locked down. Saint Clair kind of grouping up in that building. Looks like Kelsey does get that one kill. Knocks off J Ray. Gets the double. That's for sure. That's fantastic. Neb does knock down C Watts though. Gets another for that's a double for sure. Brandon coming up from behind. Can he get that? It's 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 Conestoga season. Brandon's sure. hunting that's players, finding J Ray, bursting through the door. He's off the high ground. Spots Neb, takes him down. Nice, beautiful, but up but behind, Savvy finds him through that doorway. 20 seconds left on the clock, but Saints still having control. And as I say it, Conestoga steals it right from underneath them. Neb finding two, but not going to be able to stay alive for much longer as it's time to start the rotation. Sure, you're getting the kills, but you already got to be on the next hard point, buddy. And the Saints got that message loud and clear. They're taking control. 
control. They're still fighting. Is anybody's game here? Brandon takes him down, establishing control for the Saints. They have this hard point. Conestoga, it's your move. That's for sure. Now, I wonder if they will push because I believe the second point is where actually where Neb is at the moment. Mm. So I wonder if they're going to either try to slowly pick their way up there. And he, oh, J-Ray does working. come up from behind the, the top throw, and he does get knocked out by C-Wads. And Slayer does get the kill from Neb in return. Nacho Slayer hunting through. He knows when he's being hunted, he is the apex predator. And just as a predator would know how to hunt, he knows how not to be hunted. He is going to get hunted eventually, though. J-Ray is going to take him down. But the Saints, with 20 left on the clock, 175 to 60, they are doing a great job of establishing dominance. Conestoga on the opposite side of the map, playing for the next hard point, most likely. They know they can't win the fights. And even if they do, it's not going to be worth their time, really. Just playing for picks, playing for spawns. The hard point's going to go Saints side, however, and they're already boots planted for it. I think they're gathering together to get ready for their next push, and that seems to be their play as they gather the remnants of this hard point. But Savvy didn't notice Nacho right behind him, taking him down, and the Saints getting through into the garage bay, taking them down, holding down the point. Brandon's going to get spotted and taken down, however, and we're going to see Neb not too far behind him. It's going to be a matter of time before an outbreak bursts through here. They're right next to each other. They don't know it yet. J-Ray hoping to be the spark that ignites this blaze. And that's, he's going to be jumping through the window, finding one. He's going to trade his life for the hard point. Not going to go his team's way, though. Yeah, that's for sure. St. Clair definitely does have this point taken. It does look like they will get the full 60 again for two points in a row. Does it that all? Unfortunately, J-Ray does get him as they are kind of swarming up, but now would be a good time for St. Clair to rotate to the next point. And it does look like they are, I believe, yes, they are, yep. which is perfect. Usually in the last 15 seconds, if they do gain control, either send one or two guys to the next point Absolutely. to regain that. And, and it looks like they did perfectly. That's the advantage you get for having the huge lead like they have that's right now. For sure, yes. You can make those kinds of plays. You can give the scrap points to your opponent and play for dominance in the next ones because it's a lot harder to take control when you start on that point than if you're playing into it. Now the Saints with 240. Just 10 seconds left for them to take this game. Conestoga, they're contesting. J-Ray finding one. Now can you turn this into a second? That's all you'd need to establish control. Not going to be able to find it. Seawads comes from the flank, takes him down, and already getting some kill streaks. It looks like Cootie Season's going to fall. Sabi's going to take make... him out, but it's not going to matter because all in the end, the Saints are going to take it to a nice 250 to take this game one. Conestoga, unfortunately, not going to be able to establish a strong lead against the Saints in this series, but at least they put up a really solid fight. If oh, you ask it me. was. That's for sure. St. Clair kind of was... Defense was amazing, to be honest. Pulling off two... Technically, three points, a full 60. Basically. That's amazing. Great defense, especially on a map of sub base as well. <laughs> God, that map is crazy. You I'm were telling me how complicated and hectic that map can be. It, it definitely can be, especially between that first point when both uh, when both teams are kind of going at each other. Mm. Especially that first point because one can go up front, one sorry, one can go at the bottom. One can there's high ground as well, mm -hmm. so you really got to be smart of placements. That's for sure. But Saint Clair. Did pull it off, and that is amazing. Fantastic indeed. I couldn't have put it better myself. Well done, my friend. The Saints are doing very well against Conestoga. But once again, Conestoga also playing very strong. This next game, sure. who knows? But I'm eager to find out. But we're going to have to go to a quick break first as the players, like you already kind of saw, you know, things can be a little delayed as we get in between games. Yeah. But don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back after this quick break. Stay tuned. We'll see you guys very soon.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as we are getting situated for game two. I was just so eager and excited to bring the action here. We're going to go things a little early before we get in. Aiden, after that game one, tell me how you're feeling. Do you think the Saints are going to steamroll their way through the series or are they going to have to keep fighting? Oh, to be honest, I believe it's going to be a 3-0. Like, I mean, I don't want to jinx anything, of course, of course, but like, I honestly believe it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's for sure. And I believe the next match, I believe, is Invasion and Search and Destroy, I believe, too. I know the Saints kind of have some trouble with Search and Destroy as well. There's not their, yeah. It's not their strongest suit. That's they what are, they say. That's what they say. That's not yes. what they do, though. They, yeah. It's a very, very, very different thing. Uh, I can never trust what players say their strengths and weaknesses are. That's for sure. They will straight up lie to your face. Uh, in my opinion, whenever I see the Saints on Invasion, on Search and Destroy, it is often some of the most one sided Call of Duty I see. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's either one way or the other. Either we're getting super dominated or they're super dominating. That's um, usually one more often than the other. Uh, Saints are usually doing very well. But uh, it could go either way as we get into this game, too. I'm excited to see whether or not the Saints are feeling confident, feeling prepared. They definitely should be. They should be after game. that first match. Yeah, that's for sure. What was the scoreline again? I think it was what? Like two, six, 250, obviously. 250 two, what, like to... 60? I think it was 60 63. or 80. I believe it was 60. Something like that. 60, yeah. Either way, they didn't even break the 100 barrier. Uh, so the Saints really did do a great job of absolutely dominating in that map one. Now, as we are getting situated for game two, I wonder if the Saints are, like Brandon said, they are comfortable playing against Conestoga. Do you think the Saints are, like, experimenting here, trying new things, or are they playing things very by the book? It could, it could be. They, sorry, they could be, to be honest, because it is still early in the season. I believe this is their second match, I believe. Uh, for ECAC, it for might ECAC, be. I yes, know I just so, based yeah. off of hearing Brandon yelling uh, in the Nexus, <laughs> yeah. which players obviously they get very into the games that they're playing. Um, I don't. It's definitely not the first game of the season. Oh yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> but, I know that for sure. Absolutely. Um, but ECAC is a different beast altogether. Different schools playing different leagues. You know, for all kinds of different reasons. So you oh, might yeah. be playing against some schools for one league against other schools for another. So I'm not sure. I guess that they're playing against Conestoga in the other leagues as well. But mm -hmm. at least it's. I would guess it's their first time playing Conestoga this season. Um, I believe it is, yeah. Pro most likely. But it's hopefully not going to be the last, especially with how fantastic this series is going. And as we're getting ready to go and invade Search and Destroy in this game too, ladies and gentlemen, we're bringing you the action. I'm Daniil, also known as Badger Smiki, joined by... Hayden Depars Voldemars. Gotta love squeezing in some introductions while I can. And speaking of squeezing in, the Saints are going to try their best to squeeze in the bomb on the bomb site as we're getting started. Looks like and there looks like may be some more lobby issues. I believe that's a common issue with COD lobbies, that's for sure. You would be believing correctly. Yeah. I wonder if it could be on our side or theirs. At this point, it doesn't even really matter yeah. because the game <laughs> is getting delayed a little bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, we are probably going to be, we are absolutely going to be throwing it to a quick break, that's but don't go anywhere. Game two is going to be as electric, if not more electric, as game one, and that's a Daniil promise. We'll see you guys soon.
are right back here into the action. This time the lobby was behaving and the players are misbehaving as they're getting the first kills before we were even in here. We're seeing Brandon down as well as J-Ray, some of the two hardest hitters for both these teams. Bakuti sees him taking down Dreamo. Now it's 3-2 to two here as the Saints taking the initiative with the bomb, making their way all the way over to A-Site is completely open. They're going to get the plant. Kanasuga is going to have to be scrambling for an answer. That's for sure. It does look like they're on B, but it does look like they're going to try to flank it from it looks like. That's Flanking. for sure. Realistically, their only viable option. Yeah, to be honest, there's really... <laughs> if you look at that alleyway, it's just a uh, death cone. And ooh, Nacho actually taking some heat here, getting sprayed on Neb, running around the debris, seeing if he can weasel his way into a nice little cozy spot. Savvy finding his way onto the site, oh, getting into this building, behind but behind that wall, doing a little bit of a 360, a little too fast before you could even get in there. Nacho is going to be the one to take the irresponsibility of eliminating the final player from Conestoga, taking the first round of this game. That was definitely a beautiful round, that's for sure. Defense was on point. I believe we are switching it up now. Definitely going to see how it's going to turn out for uh, St. Clair defending, that's for sure. I want to see what they're going to be doing here on the defense side. I think the first round really is important it is. Uh, to set the tone. Uh, obviously, a lot of these situations, you never know exactly what your opponent's going to do, mm -hmm. but you can make assumptions based off of their patterns and what they like to do. So the first round tells your opponent a lot. If you don't want to give away too much information for your tendencies, your habits, and your preferences. So I want to see them play this one cool. Play it chill. Don't be too forward. Don't be too eager to get things sorted out. Make them play into you as they should. Trophy System's going to stop that flashbang from going through. J-Ray's going to get taken down behind the sandbags. Brandon covering his teammates. Kudi season makes his way up to eight, but he's oh. going to get naded by Brandon. Very unfortunate play there. Neb is looking to cause even more damage as Nacho crawls his way towards a site, making sure he's watching that door. But as he turns around, he just spots him a little too late. He recognizes it didn't stay too long. He would have been looking like Swiss cheese if he hesitated any more than he already did. But running through, Dream was going to take it down by Seawads. The bomb is planted. Yes, or... Yes, the bomb is yeah. planted. Bombs down. It's going to be on the Saints to get the defuse here. Savvy coming from behind. Not going to get the kill on Nacho. Now he is. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. But at the very least, Seawads has an idea of where he's going to be as Savvy runs around the map. He's going to spot the legs. He knows exactly where he is. But can he get the kill? No! Oh. He's going to be able to finish that one out. Conestoga tying things up one-to-one. -one. That was definitely an odd round, that's for sure. 100%. Yeah. That definitely was based off of how they were playing it. The Saints kind of should have won that one, if you ask me. But obviously, at Call of Duty, at the end of the day, if you don't land your shots, you don't win the game. You don't win the game, that's for sure. We are getting set up in third round. I bet you anything, one of them's going to throw a grenade over there. That's one of the most popular uh, starting moves right here. You either toss a grenade at the car and it does end up exploding and <laughs> it works somehow. You usually end up getting a kill all the time. It's like stage hazards. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it looks like the Saints are kind of doing an old-fashioned military lineup, marching on B. Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Their commander, Brandon, must be barking at them. Nacho, gonna get a little eager here. It's gonna go around the corner, bouncing Ricochet? that frag. Not going to find any hits, but as he slides around the corner, he's going to find the kill where it matters the most. He's going to get this into a double, almost, but a nade's coming through. That's time for him to get out of dodge. Seawad's almost getting another. Seawad does finish him off. That's good. There he is. Another one for the Saints. Three to two. Once again, Neb playing mid with his teammates over on B, waiting for the Saints to get something done. But little do they know, they're already planting the bomb on A site. Can they try to get something done? Just like last time, it looks like they are going to be coming from that spawn point as well. It does look like Neb is coming up from behind. Brandon. Oh, Braden does knock him down. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> we got a lot of Bray at St. Clair College, but still, we're going to fi be finding the final kill to take this round for the Saints. Two to one, first to six, and uh, these rounds can go pretty fast if you're not too careful. Conestoga has to make sure they don't let the Saints' momentum take things away from them. They did a great job tying things up in the first one, but it was pretty shaky, for it sure. It was, it was, yes. And it, search and destroy, it can become, just like you said, it can be a quick match, or mm -hmm. sorry, a quick round, and sometimes it can be a slow round. It depends on how the players play, of course. 
And it does look like they are going to be heading towards, let's see, B for sure. St. Clair kind of focusing, getting in in the middle. Ooh. What the what the heck Brandon's is that? under that bridge again. For all those viewers who weren't there with us last year, Brandon loved that ramp spot. Yeah. The Brandon Bridge. Cootie season taking the first blood of this round. Flashes are going all around. Trophy system, I don't think there's any up there. As there bullets are flying, Cootie season getting firmly planted behind this tank. Conestoga, they want to break no man's land, but they aren't able to. Seawatt spots the foot there. I'm not sure if he's going to predict the fake or whether or not he committed for it, but he's going to see Savvy. Not going to be able to cement that kill. He's going to finally get it. Not a reaper the last round. That's and Dreamo coming up from behind. He's going to be able to spot him out, take him down. Bomb is sitting firmly planted with the Saints, and it's just one man left for Conestoga. And not for long, as they're Trying already going to get off, the kill. That's for sure. That was honestly... I'd say that would be the great defense on St. Clair, that's for sure. They didn't it's lose a single one. Yes, you are. You're, you're <laughs> correct, yeah. Nacho, look at that. Oh, I thought Brandon got I, that I kill. thought too. Nacho from cross map. He wants to pad the stats. Can't let Brandon have all the fun. He did leave the bridge, so he wasn't in his territory. <laughs> to be fair, Nacho was not violating any of our treaties uh, on the Call of Duty team. And uh, he's still doing good. With the scoring line, Seawad's doing even better still. It's 3-1 now. Conestoga wanting to answer the aggression from the Saints. It was an aggressive defense they played as well. So I can only imagine the Saints' offense is going to get even more aggressive as they build this momentum and get the read more on Conestoga. But this would be a fantastic round for Conestoga to win in terms of momentum, in terms of that mental. They haven't won a defense yet. Can they establish themselves as a force to be reckoned with? Looking so far... The Saints are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Seawad's going to be the one to take initiative and rush through. Savvy on that park. Going to go down. Seawad's immediately bursting through. Watching from behind, making sure they catch any rotations coming from the stragglers from A. Bomb's going to go down. They're starting to the plant. Nacho swinging around, checking the alleyways, checking every corner. Shots are being fired, and shots are going to stop being fired. Hajima goes down. Two of them coming from the left flank. Neb is going to get a headshot from Brandon. The last man from Kansu getting taken down in a blitz. I don't think this Saints lost another one. Another in flawless one. round. Two rounds in a row. Two more is all the Saints need to take this one down. Seawads gonna look at that beautiful falling down the stairs. That I gotta say, this might be the most embarrassing way to die. Um, not in Call of Duty, I mean, just like to die and then fall down a flight of stairs. I just feel so disrespected by the <laughs> universe at that point. Like, let me have some grace. Let me fall into a bed of roses or something immaculate like that. Not beautiful, that would be stairs. beautiful, of course. <laughs> That's how I want to go out, but some people don't get that choice. It's Conestoga. They might be going down in a bit of a blaze, not of glory, not of shame, but discontent, as they are more than capable of winning the series. They know it, I know it, we all know it. They just have to pull through. The Saints gonna lose one this time around. J-Ray gonna be taking that first blood on himself as J-Ray takes him down. Rotations are coming through already. The Saints recognizing that the plan from Conestoga is to be playing things slow, so they're gonna take a bit of initiative. Brandon coming out of his little cubby, trying to play for mid, catch any rotations coming out from that area, and the Saints wanna try to meet Conestoga instead of playing from their defense. It would be so much harder to play from the back foot as you're getting rushed. And J-Ray going to get spotted out by Nacho. Shots are going to get fired. Saints in responding in kind. We have them playing for their lives over here, right next to each other between the buildings. Cootie Season is going to get taken down by Dreamo. Time is running out, however, 30 seconds left. Saints kind of want to stall, but they definitely don't want to give up the site as the bomb is getting planted. Brandon is going to, oh, Nacho Slayer is, or Neb is going to get taken down, or is he going to take down Nacho Slayer rather? Brandon taking out Dreamo. And as we find the sensibilities of this map once again, we're going to wait for Brandon to do something here. He's going to try to spot the feet there, shooting through, hoping to find anything, but he's giving away his position. This is a dangerous play to make. He's at 14 HP, going to go down. Conestoga finding one more round it's four to two but again they haven't had any luck on those defenses Aiden do you think they have what it takes well if the Saints keep it up like this uh, I believe they will I mean anything can happen to be honest in a COD game especially for search and destroy because it is back and forth but from what looks like four and two mm. St. Clair
That's for sure. St. Clair only need two more to win this game. Conestoga still going to need two more to tie it. Things feel a lot more comfortable when you're tying things than, or when things are tied than when you have a potential match point after this one. It's a lot less pressure on you. And even we saw a little bit in that uh, in that first hard point match, when you have less pressure, you're able to do more risky things. Kudi Season taking a big risk and running down J-Ray right in the middle of that hot spot. Dreamo spraying down some of the Saints, recognizing this is time to leave. We're gonna get a kill streak coming in for the Saints. Finding one, Savvy. That's one less player you have to work with. Cootie Season almost losing that kill. We're gonna get the wall bank to finish it off. Nacho spotting them running around like ants in an ant farm. One more round is all they need. That is crazy. And that was flawless, by the way. St. Clair immediately picking it up, even after losing that one round. And I believe next round they are, I believe they're defending too. So we'll see how that goes. Mm. Now, I do notice that St. Clair immediately takes the middle position with Brandon covering on that bridge, mm -hmm. just on the uh, the right side there. Seems to be so, the default. Yeah. So we'll see what they do, see if maybe they'll switch it up and all go towards mid, just like what they did in the second round. I feel like both and, of these teams on the offense have been favoring that B push a lot. Oh, yes. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a rotation. It looks like oh, they are, they are doing a. that, too. Yeah, rushing them down. J-Ray taking the brunt of this assault, warning his teammates, and that's going to allow them a little bit of time to come around and offer support to his teammate. This is, however, not going to be what you want to see on the side of Conestoga as the Saints now have full control of mid and A site, as well as B, completely cut off. They basically just took the scrimmage line and shoved it way further back. Conestoga kind of left in the dust here. No real way to push up. They're going to have to commit for something, and the Saints are really comfortable with that because they can make quick rotations regardless. A bit of a gunfight's happening over on B site. We're going to see C Wads take Wads down Neb. And you don't want to be feeling that pain, especially with, like we said, Saints pushing them back so hard. How can you recover if you're on Conestoga here? That is the question, that's for sure. Like, so it looks like they are going for that B site, but St. Clair kind of already prepped for that. Clearly defending that well. There is a gunfight going Ooh. on. J Ray does kill on Couch. C Watch Ooh. goes in return. C Watch gets the double, that's for sure. And Slayer can get the final. Ooh. Unfortunately, no Savvy knocks him down. And that is the game for St. Clair. I believe that is what? Six to two, I believe. Six to two, it is. That is amazing. <laughs> Look at them <laughs> having fun with each other. They know that they're good. They know that they're at the top of their game right now. C Watch with that final kill. Look at that. Through the Look door at right that. Now. That right there, baby. Rival 9. That's my go-to weapon right there. <laughs> I guess I see why now, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful. You don't see marksmanship like that every day. Seawatts, 13 and 2. Woo! I, I, no shade to Seawatts, but I feel like every time I was looking at Seawatts, he was dying. <laughs> yeah, I felt like that too. I believe he did have the score streak, though. That's, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. But still, that is amazing, to be honest. And... Yeah, St. Clair obviously winning that second game, and mm -hmm. I believe we have one more to go 3-0. and Yeah, that's going to be our Game 3 situation. Can Conestoga come back from the brink of defeat and bring this series to a close, nail-biting Game 5? Well, 4 first, and then Game 5. Yeah. Or are the Saints going to tie this up, send us home early with a nice, clean Game 3? Who knows, ladies and gentlemen? We're going to find out soon after a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is the moment you've all been waiting for. What's that football song? <laughs> Anyways, we don't have enough time to play into that joke because it's just 30 lives on the board for both of these teams, and the Saints are already making a blitz push for these control points that they have to fight for. Cootie season taking out Dreamo on this rooftop, and the lives are already falling. Like 20 to 28, they're getting their get back. J Ray gonna get taken down by Nacho Slayer with that pistol. Saints inching their way to B site. They're finding their feet on it. Whether or not they'll be able to hold is going to be a different story. In fact, I think they actually have a good chance as Dreamo's going to get that taken down. Nobody else is there to contest the Saints on this point. Seawad's getting, surviving a lot longer than he should have, in yeah, my this, opinion. It's just trades at this point, that's for sure. Some bad trades, too. You know, you're trying to get a 50% off coupon, and for whatever reason, they're able to haggle it down to only 30% off. The Saints are getting <laughs> some certain <laughs> plays that they shouldn't be getting, and Konosoga are losing a chance that they definitely shouldn't be. Konosoga still fighting to get re control of a site once again. Kudi says, says no. Oh. Dreamo says yes. Blows up a barrel right in front of his face. That's going to be the first pip at the very least. Going to go over to A. Saints no longer have to worry about that first one. B as well. I think that one is controlled too. Second pip at A already. It looks like Kanasoga. They're kind of getting spawn camped a little bit as the Saints are holding firm on A site, which is going to be completely controlled. Neb not able to get the touch in time. Coming out at the very least is going to be able to get that kill. Saints found some progress on B. Not enough to secure that pit. Brandon taking down one more as he tries to find his way over. He's going to make it. Cootie Season's going to be there to meet him too as the Saints make a B line over to B. Already quickly, that was point A already captured and B, that's for sure. The Saints are coming up to that, but with one on that helicopter or the helipad, sorry, my apologies. Definitely up there, but he'd end up dropping down. So St. Clair is looking to look like it's going to capture that final point with Constoga kind of captured in their spawn. Sorry, trapped in their spawn. It does oh, look... Oh. oh my god. <laughs> Just up on that point right there where Seawads was, that is such a good defense position. We already won. Yeah. I... I That's... I Ladies and gentlemen, to get a little behind the scenes here, I just took a sip of water and looked back at the screen, and we all, we won already. Brandon <laughs> with the game-winning kill to just really help his teammates establish dominance of the point to get those final seconds on it. Saints with a very lickety split <laughs> attacking round <laughs> on control. Can Conestoga not only win this, but can they even come as close to doing it as fast? Yeah, that's for sure. My god, in control, just being by itself on high rise is chaotic. One of the first things always when going through those windows, tossing grenades, that's for sure. Gaining control, it looks like Brandon's getting, oh, gonna take control of this. Oh! One. Yeah, it does eliminate one. Dreamo waits, connects them off with Neb. Perfect, destroys that trophy system. Nacho taking down Savvy as he's holding down on that middle spot. Cootie season with the nade play. Cooking it, cooking it, okay. cooking it! Oh. Does nick him. <laughs> didn't hold it long enough. Trophy system's gonna come down, but they didn't. Look at this. Are the Saints not on defense? Why does it look like they're attacking and taking control of the points? <laughs> Konosoga haven't been able to even leave their spawn for a good amount of time with only 45 seconds left with not even a grain of progress on any of these control points. We're finally seeing some, but the Saints are already immediately pushing it back. Dreamo pushing his way through up to Nacho, almost getting the kill and surviving, but Siwaz up behind, taking down Brandon, taking down one more. Siwaz looks to have jumped off the building. <laughs> <laughs> getting taken down by Savvy, but with the trophy system down on mid and with the rotations getting snuffed out by the Saints over to B, it's going to be very difficult for Kanesoga to get that B push. At the very least, they're going to get progress at A. Saints are scrambling to get over to get those kills, and they're going to diminish the remaining. Seawad's taking a headshot down to J-Ray. Cootie Season sitting firm, waiting for anyone that dares come his way. Seawad's doing the same. Brandon getting the same done to him. Ten seconds left for Kanesoga to get both control points. Call me a hater, call me a denier, call me a non-believer. I don't think they're going to be able to get it done. But yeah, unfortunately, I don't think they will be. St. Clair playing this so great, honestly. Defense being aggressive, they mm. trapping them in their own spawn. That is crazy. I think St. Clair played that perfectly. 
That was I amazing. Mean, it looked like to the point like they looked like they were attacking. Just like, like you said, said earlier. Yeah. They were completely controlling the map. It looked like uh, Kanasoga, they weren't even able to leave that building. They were stuck there for a good 30 seconds. That just burned away so much time. And in control, time is everything. The lives are a red herring. Don't get distracted by them. Exactly. <laughs> they only come into play, oh, I don't want to say rarely, but they're definitely not the main highlight. You want to play for time for sure in this game. But with a minute 30 on the clock, the Saints have already done they're more than capable of a fast and oppressive offense. They just have to repeat the magic here again with the nades coming out, stuns coming through. Neb finding Nacho and Brandon for the first two bloods of this round. Maybe Conestoga kind of cleaned jump. up their offense. Or the defense, rather. For sure, Jay on the bottom. It looks like they are, they are kind of scattered at the moment, to be honest. Scattered in a bit of a controlled mess. Yeah, exactly. It's like spaghetti. It looks messy, but it's supposed to be. As long as the sauce covers all the noodles, it's serving its purpose. And the Saints are doing a great job of spreading it around. B and A are getting covered evenly. I think the spaghetti play was very smart by Daniil. Just gonna <laughs> just gonna call it out there for myself. Someone else will. Dreamo playing here, trying to get some leverage back to the site, but it's gonna be too late as Saints are getting progress on both sides at the same time. They're playing perfectly around the map. Just over halfway now for B, that's for sure. And it does look like, or sorry, what's his name? Kotsin is on A, oh, not on A exactly, but is trying to trap them in their spawn, especially in that corner of the shack. He's like orbiting it. He's a move. Exactly, yes. Protecting A site and anyone who dares come near it getting his feet on it so they think they know where he is but unfortunately where... getting knocked down but it was smart for him maintaining that position because St. Clair oh wait hang on they look like they were able to take B but it looks like they just got like one second oh, on it but it's going to get it's going for them for sure now. it's just a site now with a minute and 30 left you get more time as you capture more points and they're gonna have a lot of time to work with here just to capture two more points looks like they're playing a bit at their spawn Seawatt's finding one trying to push up another one from behind he's Gets finally getting taken out by J Ray Saints with one more pip over on A they're playing for their last one not Brandon last they're playing for the last savvy getting a team kill with the oh nade my God. and Conestoga also running out of lives just five remaining they only get two more respawns left but St. Clair College is going to win the game before it even becomes a factor 3-0 is going to be this game Game score and 3-0 is going to be your series score, Aiden. The Saints are dominating Conestoga, it seems. And again, no small feat, no shame to Conestoga. They are a fantastic team. They are. Brandon said it himself, they love playing them. It's always a good match, but the Saints just had their number this time around, I think. Yeah, they for sure did. It was definitely an interesting round. As you can see, they are calm. They are were they were confident during those matches. Well, that's the Saints COD team for you. That's yeah. for sure. Ah, actually, this is a little un uncharacteristic of them. They're usually a lot more. <sighs> but I think yeah. this Fun is just business as usual for them. They were just professionals, cool, calm, collected. Of course, of course. But ladies and gentlemen, that last game marks the end of our festivities here for tonight. That was our Call of Duty varsity premier team against Conestoga College in ECAC. That's just regular season play. And as we get closer, you know, someone said something today. Midterms, they're closer than you think. And I think playoffs are also a lot closer than you think. That's for sure. So quickly, too. That's gonna, gonna jump scare you guys. It's October already. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't realize it until a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Were we four days in? I believe so. We're four days in. We're four so. days too deep already. Yeah, that's for sure. September, but Sparking Zero comes out soon, so I couldn't be happier. <laughs> Speaking of couldn't be happier, ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't be happier to be here. And there's a couple of people who make us being here possible. That's going to be Subway, Tim Hortons, St. Clair College Alumni Association, the St. Clair SRC, and Alienware for making all of our stuff possible. We thank you. And of course, thank you to everybody in the back. There's a bit of a party back there, so I'm not even going to try to name all the names, but you know who you are. One of you was just talking to me in my ear, so thank you very much for making this stream <laughs> possible. And thank you, Aiden, for joining us. Yeah, thank you. I mean, this is, I think, the first time I've been back on casting. So ever since like the summer pretty much so it's great to be back and great for some cod so that's for sure 
Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us here tonight. We're going to be seeing you tomorrow with Rocket League. So if you like anything as close to pacing and frantic, chaotic energy as Call of Duty, you definitely won't want to miss tomorrow. But that's a tomorrow problem. Tonight, enjoy yourselves. Stay safe and take care. Thank you for joining us and have a fantastic night.